Okay, <clears throat> we're on 7.3, similar triangles. Picture the Eiffel Tower. And if you look a little bit closer, you can see it's made up lots and lots of little triangles in there. Triangle, um, I think even within there, they have reinforcing triangles within the picture. So there's lots of triangles in there. I think it's one of the stronger structures um, to deal with that. Okay, when we're dealing with similar triangles, um, I don't want to get confused with congruent triangles. We, I call them like the big four. We have SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS. Remember those? Those apply to congruent triangles. That's how you prove something's a congruent triangle. We're going to be talking about similar triangles, and we don't have those big four. We have different ways, and uh, I'm not sure as I'm making this recording in advance, like if I'll do a discovery activity with this, but maybe this will be discovered in class, but if not, you need to write this down anyway. These are the three ways. So you got your big three. You cannot work AAN with congruent triangles, but you can use AA similarity. And so what I'm going to do is off to the side here, and pretty much all you need in your notes is AA similarity. That's a way of proving that triangles are similar. So if we were to have any proofs in this um, chapter, I don't think you have any, but if you were, and you had to prove that angles were similar, or excuse me, triangles were similar, you could use AA similarity. You can also use, this looks familiar, SSS similarity. So if you just know that all sides are proportional, then you have similar triangles. And then in your notes as well, put SAS, similarity. Notice how you put the similarity to show that it's not a congruency statement. Okay, and that basically also I just want to point out that your two sides are proportional and your angle is congruent. Side, 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 proportional, 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 congruent, congruent for your angles. Okay, <coughs> example one. In the figure, <coughs> AB is parallel to DC. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see those kind of, uh, parallel markings. <coughs> I'm just going to highlight those to show that there is a parallel and parallel. And angle ABC and angle DCB are right angles. So I'm going to mark that in. Angle ABC and angle DCB are right angles. Determine which triangles in, this, in the figure are similar. So I've got to go with AAA. I've got to, or not AAA, AA similarity, SSS or SAS. Okay, and as I look, I see this, this would apply to maybe this triangle, so that I would need another angle in here or another side. Um, I see that this side and this side applies to this triangle right here, so if you have this, find it. But I don't really know this angle or this angle or this angle. Do I even know this other side? See, here I got this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to narrow this down so we know to look for it on our homework. And I am just going to highlight this and this. And then I always like those transversals. And I'm looking at this transversal right here. Okay? So if I already just redraw that off the side, I have a line. And the line is parallel. Here's my transversal. Isn't this angle congruent to this angle? Oh, yeah, because they're alternate interior. So this corresponds to this angle right here. And this corresponds to this angle right here. Now, this triangle right here has side, angle, side, and this triangle has side, angle, side. These sides would be proportional, and this angle would be congruent because of alternate interior angles. So I can say these are similar because of S, A, S similarity. Oh, which triangles? I guess I should say. Triangle. A, B, E which is that isosceles triangle, is similar to triangle EDC, or CVE, for that matter. Okay, example two. Ooh, in the figure, OW is 7, so I'm going to mark that right in there. BW is 9. WT is 17.5. And WI is 22.5. Determine which triangles in the figure are similar. Well, we, there's only two triangles in here, so we just need to determine if they're similar. So let's check 
9 is larger than 7, 22.5 is larger than 17.5. So I'm going to see if 9 to 22.5, taking my largers, comparing them with my smaller size, 7 to the 17.5, and then I cross multiply. All right, let's see. 9 times 17.5 equals 157.5. Okay, let's try it again. <clears throat> now I'm going to take 22.5 times 7. I'm getting, ooh, 157.5 again. So that tells me that these sides are proportional. Okay, so proportional. So I've got a side and a side that's proportional. Gosh, if only I had a congruent angle or another side. And there's no way of knowing what this other side is. At this point, no way of knowing this side. Ooh, yeah, what am I looking at right here? That angle and that angle. How do I know they're congruent? Vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent, and it happens to be between the two sides. So because of side angle size similarity, <coughs> I know that my triangle is going to be similar. So I can say triangle B O W is similar to triangle. B corresponds with I, so I, T, W. All right, that's example two. Moving on to example three. Three um, is so, eh, so similar, similar to, well, no, I better do this one. I better do this one with you. Okay, R, S is parallel to U, T. So when that's an indicator right there, I'm looking for alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, consecutive interiors. Okay, maybe I don't even need it because I see vertical angles right here. I'm going to mark those in because those are way easier, right? And they tell me that R, S equals 4, R, Q equals X plus 3. Got it. I got Q, T is equal to 2, X plus 10, and U, T equals 10. Find R, Q <coughs> and Q, T. So I have to find RQ, which is this little bit from here, and QT, because that's a cutie pie right there. <laughs> yeah, not that crazy. All right, so now I know that 4 um, is going to correspond with the 10. I'm going to work with that. And that means that X plus 3 should be similar to my 2X plus 10. Oh, and the reason I can say these are proportional, I should go back a step. I'm just writing it down. How do I know they're actually proportional? If these are parallel lines and I have a transversal, would this angle and this angle be congruent? So I've got an angle that's congruent to this angle, and i got this angle congruent to this angle. So I think I have AA similarity here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and save my triangles. <coughs> All the sides are proportional, hence 4 to 10 is the same as x plus 3 over 2x plus 10. All right, now I will cross multiply. So I take 4 times 2x plus 10 is equal to 10 times x plus 3. I cross multiply, I get 8x plus 40, and now I have 10x plus 30, and I do my fancy math. I subtract 10x from both sides. Okay, I'm going to do two steps here. I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. I get negative 10. I divide both sides by negative 2, and now I have x is equal to 5. Now that I have x is equal to 5, I can put it in. So the distance from r to q is 8 units, and I put 5 in here. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. So I can say QT, the distance from Q to T is also, is not also, it's 20 units. If I really wanted to double check, is 4 to 10 the same as 8 to 20? Cross multiply, 80 and 80, or somebody can look and say, yeah, 4 tenths is the same as 8 twentieths. So you can check the work on that. Ah, here, now I've done enough. You can do example 4. That's your example to try to figure out um, on your own for class. Example five. All right, let me try to do a fancy schmancy Promethean board thing here. Josh wanted to measure the height of Sears Tower in Chicago. Here it is. He used a 12-foot light pole. 12-foot light pole. 
Um, and measured the shadow at 1 p.m. The shadow was two feet. Notice what they got there. Then he measured the length of the Sears Tower's shadow. I don't know how you do that in the big city, but he did. And it was 242 feet at that time. What is the height of the Sears Tower? Do, 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 do. Yeah, um, these, these are what I call flagpole problems, even though there's not a flagpole in there. And they're very, very common. And I'm going to outline. Here is your, your pole. Here's the shadow. Okay, now let's see if I can move that out. Okay, and I'm going to mark it with my 12 and my 2. Now it looks like my triangles are overlapping, but let me go ahead and do this. Here is the height of the Sears Tower. Here is the shadow of the Sears Tower, and now I finish off my triangle. Now I'm going to move that one out. All right, so this height is X, and the shadow is 242. And there we have created similar figures. So now I have to do a set up a proportion. 12 is to x as 2 is to 242. So I went small, upright to large, upright, small, shadow to large, shadow. Cross multiply, 2x is the same as whatever 12 times 242 is. Looks like 2,904. All right, and then divide both sides by 2. So I have x is equal to 1, 4, 5, 2. 1,452. I didn't even check to begin with, but thankfully everything is in feet. Because that would be too bad to work through that and then find out later I didn't have everything in the same unit. So what is the height of the Sears Tower? 1,452 feet. Now, that would be interesting. I should double check that and see if that's actually correct. But if you want to do that on your own, you go right ahead. Example six, very, very similar setup. However, it's not so pretty because they're using numbers like 53 feet, 6 inches, 5 feet, 6 inches, 1 foot, 6 inch, and then X feet. <gasps> Wait a minute. 6 inches? Isn't that half of a foot? Well, this isn't so bad. Let's, let's read what we're talking about. On her trip along the East Coast, Jenny stops to look at the tallest lighthouse in the U.S., located at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. At that particular time of day, Jenny measures her shadow to be 1 feet 6 inches in length, and the length of the shadow of the lighthouse to be 53 feet 6 inches. Jenny knows that her height is 5 feet 6 inches. What is the height of Cape? I don't know how to say that. Hatteras Lighthouse to the nearest foot. Okay, so here we go. I'm not going to draw those triangles out you referred to the previous picture. So I'm going to say the height, 5 foot 6 inches, is actually 5.5 feet. I'm going to compare that to the height of the lighthouse, which is x. The shadow of Jenny is 1 foot 6 inches, so I'll put 1.5. And I am, that's, that's her shadow. The lighthouse shadow is 53 0.5. Now I cross multiply. 1.5x equals, and then I take 5.5 times 53.5, and I'm getting 294.25. 294.25. Now I need that calculator again, so I can divide that number. I don't know why it keeps disappearing on me. Why doesn't it just stay? 294. 0.25, and then I divide it by 1.5. Gives me 196.2 is what we're going to say. Oh, it says to the nearest foot. So 196.2 is just going to be 196 feet. Because I'm not going to put that 0.2 in there. Okay, that's example six. Does that seem reasonable? It should. And here ends the flagpole type problems, even though they weren't flagpoles. But you may be done one in elementary where you did actually go out there and do that with a flagpole. I think I did something like that when I was in elementary school. All right, so yeah, that's the end of 7.3.